All right, so we're in ballistics mode with this setup and there are a few things to understand to maximize your opportunity for success. The first one is the power level of these output transmitters is fully adjustable. And in ballistics mode, when you have a very high speed projectile and very small projectile going through the beam, we need to maximize the sensitivity. And we can do that by adjusting this. If we watch the LED, if I adjust this level down, you'll see now there's no beam, just turn it back on just so that the orange LED illuminates again. So this, that means this is set up as sensitive as possible. So no matter whether the projectile is really tiny and really fast, the beam break will be detected and trigger the system. Now the default way that this works is, I want to be photographing a bullet impacting a target at a certain point in space. Think about what I said before, where if I get my timing right for one impact here and we get a great shot, but I want to repeat it, the next time I fire the gun, the velocity of the pallet is going to be less. So it's going to take a longer time to reach here. If I'd based my trigger system on timing, my first impact would be here. Then my second shot, the bullet would be here. The third bullet would be here. The third time I would fire it would be here. So the ballistics mode of the stop shot system is based on distance and time, not just time. And the, the default method of showing, the default setup for this is we have these two beams actually five inches apart, such that in the default setting, when the bullet reaches another five inches beyond the second sensor, the flash will fire. I'm actually going to, just to give us a bit of space to work with, come down here and adjust our multiplier to two. And we do that by hitting the config button on the ballistics output channel, which happens to be number one. And then we scroll through the screen, the number of pulses. We come to the distance multiplier. We increment that by clicking the up button once, come back to the configuration menu. And now we will have a multiplier of two on that ballistics output channel. What happens then is every time the projectile breaks the second beam, 10 inches later, the flash will fire. It multiplies this distance by two. And what, very simply, it's regardless of the velocity of what's actually going through the beam. So let me show you by moving my hands through it. And we have this hot shoe flash here as a rough uh, calculation of, of where we want the impact to occur, where we want the flash to fire. So if we go through here at constant velocity, you'll see that the flash fires when my hand is right about here. Regardless of how fast I put my hand through, if I do it fairly slowly, it doesn't matter how fast my hand is going, the flash occurs at a, at, at a low, when, my, when the, my hand is at a certain location, not a certain time. So if my bullet fires fast, it'll still fire the flash here. If my bullet fires slow, it will still fire here. So I'm getting the point of impact of my ballistic, whatever it is, the projectile upon my target consistently. And that is a huge, huge feature. Again, for any of us who have done ballistics photography, particularly with air pellets, the timing of those and the velocity of those air pellets is all over the place. And nailing a point in space where it's going to impact something in a certain time is challenging. This is a really, really great, safe and, and rigid method. And as I mentioned before, the plans for this jig here are on the Cognosis website. It's very easy, very cheap to build. And frankly, I recommend you do it because it is a boatload of fun. Thanks for watching.